So it's the first couple of weeks of year 10 and you're overwhelmed. You haven't really been exposed to content this hard before. And on top of that, you're juggling between eight, nine, 10, or even 11 different subjects. Maybe you're questioning whether you'll get through it at all. Don't worry though, here's a complete guide to starting off your GCSE journey. Before I start though, it's been four months since my last video. I had to take some time off for my A-levels and then I spent the whole summer working on something I'm extremely proud of for you guys to benefit from. If you wanna know more about it, just check the description. And then it took some more time to settle into university. But you guys didn't think that just because I graduated then I would leave you behind, right? Of course not. And so, if you wanna start off your GCSE journey right, you have to first learn how to learn. If I could go back to year 10, I'd spend the first couple of weeks before any important mocks or unit tests come up just learning how to learn and digest the information. If you're anything like me, you probably didn't put that much effort into the years leading up to year 10 because, well, they were just quite easy. For me, at least, there was no grading system, so all I had to do was just pass. And so just reading the textbook and making notes was enough to get me through most of my classes up to year 9. But then when I reached year 10, I was suddenly hit with a huge jump in difficulty that caught me by surprise. That being said, with the right learning and studying techniques, I was able to make the content in year 10 and year 11 as easy as the content leading up to those years. How did I do it though? Well first, it's with efficient studying. I'd learn efficient studying techniques that would allow me to understand and digest information thrown at me with ease. I'd also learn memorization techniques that would help me memorize and store that information for as long as possible. You know, things like making flashcards and using them properly. And then, I'd bring all of this together through properly doing practice questions. Now I've made videos covering pretty much all of these aspects, from making notes and flashcards to other efficient studying techniques. You can check those videos out for a more detailed explanation of each technique. Now, after learning the general principles on how to learn, I'd sit down and look at all of the subjects I take, and ask myself, how are they different? Now, this is really important because the principles we just talked about cover pretty much all of the subjects, but at a pretty surface level. If you want to get those top grades, you need to understand the differences between each subject you take, and using that knowledge, tweak and optimize some techniques over others so that you can get the most out of your revision. This is one of the biggest mistakes I made in year 10, studying for all of my subjects in the same way. That way was optimized for STEM subjects, so I was getting good grades in math, the sciences, computer science, but it wasn't really optimized for essay-based subjects, and so English Lit and English Lang were lacking behind. But then when I changed up my technique to cater for essay-based subjects, that's when I really started getting into those top grades. Next, I'd expose myself to exam questions as early as possible. I still remember being back in year 10 and all of my teachers were telling me to do as many practice questions as I can, but I dreaded it and I kept on procrastinating. I told myself that making notes will be enough and that I'll save up the practice questions for when I have a mock. Don't do that. After my first couple of unit tests, I realized that you have to do exam questions. You need to have a good understanding of how the exam questions for each subject you take are structured even before you finalize your studying technique for that subject. Let me give you an example. Say you took physics and you wanted to make a studying technique. So you just looked at the syllabus and you created a technique that reflects the syllabus. You haven't taken into account that some questions in physics will require math and then other questions like six and five markers will have an essay based element. You have now shot yourself in the foot because you didn't take into account major parts of the course. That could cost you a grade or even two grades, the difference between a six and an eight. And so, I know it's hard, but you have to push yourself to expose yourself to exam questions as early as possible so they can really marinate in your mind. That will give you a really good understanding of what the examiner looks for so you can prepare for it as optimally as you can. And so the final step is to combine all of what we just talked about into a realistic routine that you think you can uphold for the next two years. I don't only include revision, I also include other aspects of my lifestyle that will play a huge role in my grades. For example, don't only include when and how long you'll study for, also include your sleeping routine, any exercise you'll do, and any other hobbies that will help you relax or build mental strength, for example. Your GCSE journey is not only going to be based on how long you can study for and how hard you can study, it's also going to include your diet, your exercise, and your sleep. I've made plenty of videos talking about these lifestyle factors, especially sleep, because that's the most important one. And so if you want a better understanding, go ahead and watch these videos. Now make sure that this routine is challenging, but also realistic. Don't fall into the mistake of making it literally impossible. Like waking up at 4.30 a.m. every day and studying for 12 hours a day. Not only is this counterproductive, but it will also make you hate your life before you even get to A-levels. Instead, try to make it sustainable. For example, I know myself well, and I know that I could wake up at 6.30 a.m. on the weekends and get some work done and I'll stick to it 95% of the time. You know yourself well so try to set your routine at the upper boundary of what you think you're capable of and let's say you make a routine and you try it for a week or two and then you realize it's a bit too easy then there's no harm in challenging yourself by making it a bit more difficult so that you can get the most out of your time and that ultimately will be the key to getting those top grades. 